So Hybrid Humans is a book about my journey to discover more about my disability and also the technologies that help me overcome that disability or live with it. Uh, and in the process of writing it, I went off and met lots of different people who interact and interface with different technologies to either overcome or live with or adapt to their disabilities. So it's really a book about how technology can help us be more human, I think. So the leg that's on display in the Welcome Collection is in the Being Human Gallery, and one of the curators asked me if I'd be willing to loan one of my prosthetics. And I've actually got quite a lot in the attic, uh, and so I said, yeah, sure. And it's one of the early uh, microprocessor needs that I was given when I was first re rehabilitating. So it's great to have it in the collection, and it's wonderful that people can see it, but it's a bit odd for me having a piece of my, you know, a piece of my body in a way, uh, or, or a piece of technology that once stood in for my body. Uh, on display. One of the most remarkable things I discovered researching hybrid humans was how some of the most up-to-date and latest technology that we're implanting into people like bionic eyes or some of the latest cochlear implants, how when we read about them they seem like these, these amazing technologies that, that um, change people's lives and they really do but also those people have to live with this technology and monitor it and make sure it doesn't get infected and that the body's not rejecting it. So it was those things that I think the sort of the balance of when it's worth putting these things into people or not, I think that was the most interesting thing I discovered. I think uh, the most interesting person I met was actually a friend of mine because I'd known him before when he was injure, injured in Afghanistan. And then I met him again when he'd had this, um, this procedure called osseointegration, which is where you drill uh, a hole out of your, your femur and you put a titanium rod into the femur. And that's a way of suspending a prosthetic onto a leg and gets rid of all the problems of prosthetic sockets that are uncomfortable and hot and hurt. Um, and it was amazing seeing his transition from someone who hadn't been able to walk and had never got on with prosthetics and then finding a technology 10 years later that was allowing, allowing him to have mobility. I think one of the interesting things about the pandemic was when the pandemic first struck as a disabled person, all those systems and people who were there for me to go and see when I needed help, you know, my prosthetist who would sort my leg out, uh, or doctors who would sort an infection, um, they seemed less accessible. And if there was a problem which my, with my leg, which there was, it was much harder to get help. And I think that, may, that, that created far more anxiety in me, but also made me very aware that it's not just about the prosthetic itself. There's a whole system of institutions and med tech organizations and researchers who are all part of the technologies that help people overcome their disabilities. My relationship with my disability and prosthetics has really changed. I think when I was first injured, it was very much about overcoming disability and technology really helped me do that. But over the years, I've come to understand that actually having a world that's more accessible and easy to access for disabled people is almost all of the battle and that the technology can only go so far. <laughs>